Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Voice. Today we are at the next topic that is the Indian studies explained. We are at the 35th position of our topic. In the last Indian study we saw how the bishop was dominating the knight and today we have a reverse situation where we see the knight showing its power over the bad bishop. So the whole study is based upon the poor placing of this G8 bishop. But things look slightly difficult at first. Because if we try to attack the bishop or just block it, it doesn't work. For instance, knight c6 check, kc7, knight e7, bishop is attacked. But the bishop can manage to come to the h7 square and soon it will reach the a2 square. So a2 g8 diagonal will be controlled. And even if the f7 pawn is lost, black will be able to give up his bishop for the f pawn. After knight g4 also, simply bishop h7. And if the pawn is attacked by knight h6, bishop can just be on the g6 square. And now there is no good way to attack the f7 pawn. Because the black king soon manages to come to the d8 or the d6 squares. Uh, for example, king f4, kc7, ke5. Black can just wait with the move bh5. So how should white win the game? White uses his knight to trap the bishop with the move nd7 check. King c7. King attacks the white knight and the knight goes to f8. So knight also goes to the corner and this is what happens in the studies. The unusual feature of the position becomes prominent. The knight now guards the e6 square, e7 is guarded by the pawn. So the black king cannot enter through the e6 or e7 squares. Bishop on g8 is now trapped and white is threatening to get his king to the h6 square. But there are some hurdles still. After the move, kd6, white has to find the only move to be able to win the game. Because when the white king reaches g5, we should not allow ke5 that is very important so white goes with the move kg4 and he is trying to get the distant opposition after ke5 kg5 if the king has to move then kh6 ke5 kg7 and white wins the game so after ke5 kg7 King f5, this time the knight can just move to d7, putting black in as usual. Now the bishop is lost and the game is over. Of course, after ke6, kg8, kd7, kf7 and white wins. Black can try the move kd5 here, to which white plays the right move king h5. Only move which is good enough to win. Now putting black in as usual, after ke5, then comes kg5 and as soon as the king moves away, the king goes to h6 and g7 and white wins the game. So the main line of the analysis would be the black king will try to approach the f8 knight and trap the knight. So after nf8 comes king d8 and this is the variation where many people leave the calculation midway thinking that the knight would be trapped and lost. But here is the power of the king and we see the weakness of the g8 bishop exploited in full. So now comes king f4, ke8, kg5, king f8 and kh6. We have a picturesque position here. White is a full piece down but black is unable to avoid the entry to the g7 square and white will win the game no matter what. After bishop h7, king h7, ke8, kg7, f7 pawn is lost and the pawn would queen. And if the king tries to reach e6, black is one move short. After ke8, kg7, kd7, king g8, k6 only move and kg7. This is the position of reciprocal Zuzue which we have discussed before. And with black on the move, his king has to give way 
for the white king to take the pawn on f7 and white wins after ke5 king f7 king moves away and the pawn promotes finally after ke8 kg7 bh7 doesn't change anything after king h7 kd7 white has to just carefully pick the square he should not go to g7 because ke6 and white will lose so first kg8 attacking the pawn on f7 ke6 and kg7 again putting black in a zoo zone and white wins the game so i hope you are enjoying these lessons do like share and subscribe the channel thanks for your time